wearing a white shirt for a makeup video, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend that doesn't make me nervous. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Lindsay and I bring you content on clean beauty and skincare. If you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you. And if you are already, thank you. Today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a comparison of the two Erie Perez foundations, the Quinoa Water Foundation and the Oat Milk Foundation. I'm also going to be testing out a couple other of our products, the Vanilla Highlighter as well, and the Beetroot Cheek and Lip Tint. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, just a disclaimer before we start, I did forget to film an intro and an outro before when I filmed the demo, so if I look different, that's why. I did put on the same shirt though, so hopefully that helps. Right, I have all the goodies in this little bag here. Let's get started. Let's get into it. I don't know how to, is it Yuri Perez, Eri Perez? Let's just pretend I'm saying it however you say it. I should have probably looked it up before I started this video, but hey, I'm sorry, what can you do? First off, we have the Erie Perez Oat Milk Foundation. This bad boy retails for $35. According to the description, it's supposed to be medium to full coverage and it comes in six shades, which is pretty horrible, but more than the other foundation I'm gonna talk about, which has a horrendous shade range, but more on that later. <laughs> So first off, all the products I'm using are vegan and cruelty free. I'm not sure if their whole line is vegan and cruelty free, but all the products I saw were vegan. I think their whole line is cruelty free, obviously. But for the oat milk foundation, it comes in this simple white box. I have the shade Honey, which I believe is the second darkest shade. Um, maybe not. This is the tube it comes in. I think it's really cute, really sleek and simple. It has like the shade right on the bottom there. So this is one of the foundations I'm going to be testing out. And then the other one is the Quinoa Water Foundation. This one is $32 and comes in three shades. I thought they had more shades. I ordered this off of the detox market, so I thought they only carried like three of the shades. But apparently they only make three shades of this foundation. I don't really know why. But I'm going to try it out anyway because I ordered it. Anyway, this is what the Quinoa Water Foundation, this is supposed to be like a lighter to medium coverage. It's supposed to be buildable. Of course, it is like a water foundation, so I'm expecting it to be lighter coverage. But we're going to do the Quinoa Water Foundation probably on this side of my face. Then we'll do the Oat Milk Foundation on this side. So just like put that in your memory. I'm also trying out some of their other products I have here. I also picked up the Vanilla Highlighter. And then I've had this product before. It's their Eerie Perez Beetroot Cheek and Lip Tint in the shade Fun. So first off, I'll read you the description for the Oat Milk Foundation. It says, achieve a healthy complexion with this medium to full coverage long wear foundation suitable for all skin types. This breathable formula smooths imperfections infused with oat and peach extracts to help replenish and protect skin from free radicals. For best results, apply with our multi-purpose brush to moisturize skin. So uh, both these foundations have really good ingredients in them, really minimal, good for your skin ingredients. Like I said, I do like the packaging. For both of the foundations, they suggest using their brush. I did not pick up their brush, so I'm gonna be using just a regular blending brush. I'm also going to be trying them out with a sponge just to see how they perform. So we're gonna start with the Oat Milk Foundation. I will swatch it on my hand before we start just so you guys can see the shade. So this is the Oat Milk Foundation in the shade Honey right there on my hand. Definitely a more yellow undertoned foundation. I'm kinda scared to apply this, I don't know why. I'm gonna take a little bit on the back of my hand. I don't know how much to get yet, but I guess we could always build it up. So I have a little dollop there. Guess I will start with a brush and then maybe move on to a sponge to see how it applies. But I'm gonna use just like an It Cosmetics Flaws Complexion Brush is just a really dense kabuki brush, which looks like what their foundation brush was. Uh, I would definitely not call that medium to full coverage. I don't know if that was just the brush, but it kind of just like <laughs> blended away. Let me try with a sponge. Let's see if that works. I usually like applying foundations with a sponge, so maybe that will help. I mean, it did give me a little bit of coverage. So I'm just using a Real Technique sponge. I 
So first off, it looks really natural on the skin, like when I'm blending it in, the finish is definitely natural. It's not too dewy, it's not really matte. Just a nice like in-between finish, if you know what I'm saying. Definitely like how it applied with a sponge better. It looks gorgeous on the skin so far. I wouldn't say it's full coverage, maybe a very light medium, at least on my skin. You could probably build it up to a full. We're gonna do another layer to see. We'll dot some more on here and see how it builds. I'm gonna do probably a couple layers of each foundation just to see how they build on themselves and see how much coverage we can get out of these suckers. The shade isn't looking too bad on my skin either. I don't necessarily have yellow undertones, but I usually gear towards more yellow undertoned foundation just because I feel like I like to cancel out the redness in my skin and a yellow tone foundation is a really good way to do that. That built up really nice. It didn't like pick up on the layer below it. It looks really beautiful on the skin. When I first apply it, that's like the thing I notice is it, it's really like natural looking. It does have like a bit of a sheen to it, but it's not too dewy. It's not too dewy to the point where I feel like it would like slide off of your face. It looks really beautiful on the skin. All right, I really love how this is looking on my skin. I feel like I keep saying the same thing, but it looks really skin-like and like a little bit of a dew, but like not too much. I don't know if you guys can see that like on my cheekbone. It feels really nice and lightweight. It layered well upon itself. So far, so good. Let's move on to the Quinoa Water Foundation. So of course I'm gonna shake this one up really well before we go in and use it. So the description on this one says, this weightless foundation blends into the skin for a smooth and natural finish. Its lightweight formula is buildable to give you skin, to give your skin either a light or medium coverage. Perfect for all skin types. This formula is enriched with quinoa, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, it says apply the amount needed onto moisturized skin, blend with the multi-purpose brush. Okay, so I have the shade Haze, which out of the all three shades that they carry, this is like the middle one which looks like more of a fair tone with yellow undertone to it. I'll put it on my hand so you guys can see what it looks like. It is right there on my hand. Let me put the oat milk foundation on my hand next to it so we can pair the shades. So this is the oat milk foundation in the shade Honey, and then this is the water foundation in the shade Haze. This one's definitely a little bit lighter, but they're both very yellow undertone. They look pretty similar, so hopefully my face it doesn't look like two different shades. So I'm just gonna shake this again for good measure. We'll try with a brush, I guess, at first, and then we'll do the sponge. Very liquidy, first impression. It's literally like water. Okay, I feel like it barely did anything to my skin. Okay, let's try another layer. This time I'm gonna try it with the sponge. I forgot to mention this, but I don't notice any scent for either of the foundations. They're really like, I don't smell anything in particular. They're basically unscented. Yeah, I don't have any scent coming off of them. Okay, with a sponge that actually gave me a nice amount of coverage with two layers. So far, I like both of the foundations better with a sponge. For some reason, even though that shade looked darker on my hand, I feel like on my face it looks lighter. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. All right, so that looks really natural on my face as well. With one layer, it was really light coverage. If you're into that, maybe go with that one. Um, with two layers, I am getting a nice buildup of coverage. It's not clinging to any dry patches. Just like the oatmeal foundation, it looks incredibly natural on the skin. I'm gonna go ahead and put on another layer just to see you know, how much coverage we can get out of this. So I actually feel like the Quinoa Water Foundation is more of a natural finish than the Oat Milk one. Not natural finish, I don't really know what I'm trying to say. So I would say the Water Foundation is a little bit less dewy than the Oat Milk one. With the Oat Milk Foundation, I'm getting like that sheen on my cheekbone. This one is kind of just like a really natural skin finish. Both of them look really beautiful on the skin. Like I said, this shade, even though on my hand it looked darker, it kind of looks lighter on my face. I don't know why, um, but they both look really natural. They're not clinging to my texture or any of my spots. 
I honestly don't know which one I like better right now. I feel like I'd have to wear them throughout the day. I would say I like the application more of the oat milk one just because it had more coverage than the quinoa water one. I feel like I had to use a lot of product to get the like sort of medium coverage that I desire. If you like more of a lightweight, like lighter coverage, I would go with the quinoa water foundation. If you like more of a medium buildable coverage, I would say the oat milk one is for you. Um, if you like more of like a dewy finish, this one is good as well. I feel like I'm actually liking these more than I thought I would. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in so you can see closer up what they look like. This side of my face is the Quinoa Water Foundation and this side is the Oat Milk Foundation. Let me know in the comments which one you guys like better on my skin. I'm kind of feeling this side a little bit more, but I don't know. This one is beautiful as well. Let me know in the comments. Let's get on with the rest of this look. I'm gonna use the Han Cosmetics Concealer in Fair. This is thicker and more coverage than the Cloven Hollow one I usually talk about, so I feel like you have to use like a lot less under the eyes, but it's really beautiful on any spots or like discoloration you have. And it smells really good. It smells like something fruity. Not too like strongly scented. Just gonna go ahead and beat that in. So concealer went over both of them fine. No problems in that arena. That'd be a fun place to go to, the concealer arena. Let me go ahead and set my under eyes really quick before we move on. I'm gonna go in with the Well People Bio Base Baked Foundation, just for the under eyes. The next product I have to try here is their vanilla highlighter in the shade Falling Star. I think they have two shades of this. The other one is like a darker bronze, which is Probably too dark on my skin tone, but this is what it looks like. I have swatched this before, but I've never used it. I like how it comes in a wider pan because I feel like these small jar highlighters are kind of hard to like really get in there, you know? And if you wanted to use a brush, it's a lot easier with a wider pan like this. Now the smell of this when I opened it, it smells like your classic like organic makeup smell like you made it out of minerals and oil. Like it doesn't smell bad, it just definitely smells really natural. <laughs> it kind of smells like makeup you get as a kid as well. Pretty nostalgic. I'm gonna just go in with my finger for this. Ooh, that's pretty. That's really pretty, super creamy. It went over the foundations well. I actually put a little bit over the powder too and it didn't like pick up on any of it. So that's impressive. Uh, I forgot how much this is, but I will link it below for you guys to peruse. Definitely one of those like really wet look highlighters. I like it, I think it's really pretty. All right, the last Erie Perez product I have is their Beetroot, Beetroot Cheek and Lip Tint in the shade Fun. This looks really scary. I have used this before. It's a really bright pink, but it's a tint, so it's really sheer. I'm not gonna apply this straight on my face because I'm kind of scared it's gonna like stick to wherever I put it. So I'm actually gonna go in, dab my sponge in it, and then pop it on the cheeks. I've never used it on my cheeks. I've only used it on my lips, so wish me luck. I'm just gonna go in with the flat end of the sponge. I don't know why. This is kind of scary. Huh. Okay, you have to work quicker than that, people. Okay, let's, I'm kind of scared to do this, but huh. let's try it out. This isn't a shade I would normally use on my cheeks. Uh, more of a subdued blush kind of gal. But I think it's sheer enough where it's not too crazy looking. Yeah, definitely apply it with a sponge. I wouldn't go straight in with your applicator because I feel like it would, if you didn't blend it quick enough, it would kind of just like stay where you put it like it did on my hand there. If you don't blend it quick enough, it will just like stick. I guess that's nice. I feel like it kind of took the coverage away from the foundation. I'm gonna go ahead, set the rest of my face, finish up my makeup, and then I will be back for my final thoughts. That was it for today's video. Sorry if the end is like kind of cut off. I forgot to film an outro, but um, let me just give you an overview of my thoughts of the foundations. So first off, the Quinoa Water Foundation. Even though this color looked darker on my hand, it ended up lighter on my face. Not really sure why that happened. This one's super lightweight. If you're more of like a light coverage type of person, I would say the Quinoa Water Foundation is a good one to pick up. The ingredients are great. They provide a lot of skincare benefits as well. Definitely really lightweight. The coverage is okay. Honestly, it's something I wouldn't 
gravitate towards just because I prefer a more medium coverage. But like I said, if you like a really light everyday foundation that's extremely lightweight, this one is the way to go because it is water-based. It feels like literally nothing on your skin. You can build it up as well if you want more coverage. I do think this is a good foundation. I don't think personally for me I would use it a lot, but if, like I said, if you are looking for a foundation that is like what I just described, then yeah, this one's a good one. Next for the oat milk foundation, I would say this one is my preference over the two just because like I keep saying, I prefer a more medium buildable coverage. This is definitely what it gives you. I also like the finish of it a little bit better. It has a little bit more of a dew to the skin, but I think it's a really beautiful foundation. It looks really natural, blends in beautifully. Like I said, you can build this one up as well. I think this would work for any skin type, honestly. I think both of them would work for any skin type. Maybe not the water foundation. If you have a lot of dry patches, I feel like that would kind of cling to them. But if you have drier skin, normal skin, even oily skin, I think this oat milk foundation would work for because it's not too emollient on the skin. It doesn't look too greasy. It does have a really healthy glow to it, but it's not like overly dewy if you know what I mean when you set it down it just wears a long time definitely really like this foundation um, I don't really have anything bad to say about the formulas other than the shade range definitely needs to be improved on it's just not enough shades three shades is atrocious like that just doesn't work for me it worked for my skin because I am fair and I feel like most natural brands when they have a limited shade range it's usually geared towards like more fair skin I feel like even some brands don't even like have a lot of medium shades which sucks but yeah, other than that, I think they're great foundations, but shades definitely need to be improved on. I do really like this highlighter though. This is the shade Falling Star. I mentioned that before. They have two shades of this. I really like the formula on this. The smell is a little bit weird, but it's not bad. I don't really know how to describe it, but it is a really pretty highlight. It's not too sticky. It is like a nice, really like dewy finish. It doesn't really stick to your hair or anything like this. I do like this highlighter. So that about sums up my thoughts on these Eerie Perez products. If you guys have tried anything from the brand, definitely let me know below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I would love for you guys to join me and also hit the notifications bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in my next video.